Welcome back. Back with another banger. It's the React Files. Hope you're having a good night. If you haven't already, please take a second. Smash that like. Subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Just to make sure the algorithm knows what's up. So let's get straight to it. In 1980, a towering monument emerged on a five-acre plot of farmland in Elbert County, Georgia. Comprised of four monolithic slabs of granite, the Georgia Guidestones bore inscriptions outlining principles for a supposedly more peaceful and orderly society. Erected under the cloak of anonymity, the identity of the monument's creator, known only as R.C. Christian, remained a closely guarded secret for four decades. The principles etched into the Guidestones hinted at a dystopian vision for humanity, advocating for concepts such as population control, eugenics, a global language, and a world court. While some interpreted these ideals as noble aspirations, others saw them as ominous directives heralding the dawn of the new world order. The Guidestones consisted of four massive slabs of granite set in a paddle wheel formation supporting a central capstone. Each of the four vertical slabs was inscribed with ten guidelines or principles in eight different languages. One language on each face of the four slabs. The inscriptions are the same in eight languages. Arabic, Chinese, Swahili, Hindi, Russian, English, Spanish, and Hebrew. They advocate for humanity to limit population and personal desires to maintain balance with the environment. The 10 guidelines are as follows. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Unite humanity with a living new language. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. The monument was commissioned by a man using the pseudonym R.C. Christian, who represented a group of anonymous Americans. The purpose and the identity of the people behind the Guidestones have been a topic of much speculation and conspiracy theory. Critics have interpreted the messages in various ways, with some viewing them as a call for wise stewardship of the earth, and others seeing them as an ominous sign of a new world order's agenda. In July 2022, the Guidestones were damaged in a bomb attack and subsequently demolished due to, quote, safety concerns. Despite their destruction, the structure was designed to have certain astronomical features. For instance, a hole drilled through the capstone served as a nodal point to observe the North Star. Another slot aligned with the solstices and equinoxes, allowing sunlight to pass through and indicate the day of the year. A slab adjacent to the Guidestones mentioned a time capsule buried below it, but the dates of burial and opening were never inscribed, leading to questions about whether a time capsule actually exists and, if so, what it might contain. Apart from the hole through which the North Star could be observed, the Guidestones also had a slot aligned with the solstices, allowing a beam of sunlight to pass through and illuminate the day's date on an engraving. One side of the capstone is inscribed with the words, let these be guidestones to an age of reason, in four ancient languages, Babylonian cuneiform, classical Greek, Sanskrit, and ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Shout out to Jason Adalbi with another great piece. The Georgia Guidestones Explained. 
Okay, Civil War is coming out this weekend, and I saw it at South by Southwest, so it's time to finally talk about it. I am going to come out and say it. I am an Alex Garland lover, defender, whatever you want to call it. I genuinely think this film is a horrifying masterpiece, and I think people are talking about all the wrong things leading up to the release of this film. The vast majority of the conversation has been about this map, and the fact that people think it's unrealistic, and the fact that people think that only a British man or a non-American could conceive of, like, these lines of division, like Texas and California having any kind of alliance seems ridiculous to Americans. I get that. But the thing is, this is a film about American violence made from an outside perspective. This is a film about the American violence that Americans have been shielded from for decades, for centuries. And what it would look like if Americans were suddenly exposed to the American imperialistic violence that we've inflicted on countless countries over the years. And I understand that like with our heightened political divide in this country, like it's understandable that people go into a movie like this expecting to see like the ways, the roles that the Democrats and the Republicans would play and the way that that shakes out. But the truth is taking a step back and looking at American foreign policy through a lens like this is is so effective because it challenges the very like core identity of what America is supposed to be. And even someone who grew up overseas for a portion of my life and has had like spent a lot of time deconstructing my identity as an American, some of the imagery in this in this movie was so viscerally upsetting, nauseating and physically uncomfortable in a way that I think is is really vital, especially when you look at the state of international politics right now and the way that it doesn't matter if you fall on the left or the right in this country. We look at what our politicians are doing and American foreign policy and specifically the violence of American foreign policy is nonpartisan in this country. This is an anti-war movie that brilliantly looks at war through the lens of journalism. And also, it's very introspective in considering what is the purpose of documenting these things, both in a literal journalistic way and in an artistic way. Like this film, I think there's a lot of parallels to Killers of the Flower Moon in the way it questions like Alex Garland's role as the creator in films like this and like the idea of journalistic integrity in and of itself. I think it's understandable, given Alex Garland's filmography, that I think a lot of people had very preconceived notions about what this was going to be. I mean, even even the poster is like giving Independence Day. I think it's I think it, a lot of people went into this expecting it to be like high si high sci fi, like, you know, very like fun to an extent, but exciting thrills. And it's definitely thrilling. Uh, there's definitely like high tension in a lot of scenes. But this film is an incredibly somber and bleak anti-war film. And honestly, I think it confronts American violence in a way that is going to be accessible for a lot of people to help them consider things that they haven't really been able to contextualize before. For. I think it's actually super, super brilliant to put it in this like dystopian sci-fi setting because I think it's really difficult for a lot of Americans to confront the reality of American international violence. Um, and this this is a, a package that I think is going to be accessible to people. Like, I honestly think that this film is going to be incredibly, incredibly important. And it's also just fucking gorgeous. Like, it's absolutely beautiful, like, typical for Garland. It sounds incredible. The sound design is harrowing. And everyone gives an incredible performance. Kirsten Dunst, Kaylee Spenny, uh, Wagner Mora, like, it, it's, it's honestly, I'm, I'm seeing it again tonight. And I, I can't wait, but I also might throw up. Like, I, it's one of my favorites of the year so far. I, well, I, I'm so sorry. I'm coming out. I'm coming out as an Alex Garland, like, Stan. I can't. And I, I think people are going to start looking at the rest of his filmography differently too. I, I gotta say, I think, I think, I think it's coming. Shout out to Jay Stubbs. She said, she's about to go see it again. I definitely got to see this movie. Let me know in the comments down below if you've seen it or not. I feel like it's an extension of leave the world behind. You know, I'm kind of vibes. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. You know, not enough people are talking about A24's new movie, Civil War. The film follows Kristen Dunst as she navigates this dystopian future where, yes, the United States is in their second Civil War. And don't assume that this movie is some political movie about red versus blue because, get this, in this future, the United States is divided into five different factions. The New People's Army, the Loyalist States, the Florida Alliance. I mean, the Florida Alliance makes sense. Give it a couple years and this will be real. And the Western forces between Texas and California. California and Texas are allies. I can see why the country is in chaos. So rest assured, this film is fiction. I feel like most war movies usually adapt some historic battle from the past, so making this take place in a dystopian future is very unique. I'm also glad that the director, Alex Garland, did not make this film about red versus blue because I did not need that in my life. But rather, this movie questions the idea of even having any good guys or bad guys. A24 Civil War will be releasing on April 12th, 2024, so let me know if you're watching.
Yeah, that dystopian future with those maps, the five districts. Seems very interesting. I wonder if there's similar parallels to the days we live in now. A24 is Civil War. It's becoming the talk of the town. April 12th. I know I'm definitely going to be in there. Let me know how many of y'all are going to be watching it too in the comments down below. I just saw Civil War and here are my thoughts. If you had one expectation for this movie, then you were going to be surprised that the expectations you had were all wrong. First and foremost, everyone in our country needs to see this movie. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this movie and what happens within, but what I can tell you is that this movie does not rely on politics to get its point across. Just to give you an idea of the emotional impact of this movie, when Civil War was over, the entire theater was dead silent and the silence was deafening. I looked over at a few people and when we met eyes, we could feel the emotional distress and anxiety throughout the entire theater. What I want to tell you is that this movie serves as a warning to our own country and the political division that we find ourselves in. How the war comes about is not the movie's primary concern. What it's concerned with is that this is war amongst our own citizens committing atrocities on each other, and we never really know the root cause of this conflict. I can say that the acting in this movie is fantastic, but the main focus of this movie is not about the actors. No. The main character is the war itself. If you want to know what this movie is really trying to convey, it's a warning to our own people. We have so much varying political division in our country, it puts you front and center in an ultra-realistic look at America that is already in the middle of its civil war. People who were friends eliminate each other. People don't even know the who or why they are fighting. Most of the country doesn't even understand the cause for why they are fighting in the first place. I give this movie my first 10 out of 10 for the year. What Garland and A24 has done here is nothing short of a masterpiece on every level. If you were to see any movie this year in the theater, it needs to be Civil War. And if you walk out of the theater as speechless as I did, then you will understand why this is such an important film to our country. Last time I heard reactions like that was the passion of the Christ. But people were feeling physical symptoms while watching and after the movie. Boy, he said the crowd was deafening. Not a word. I can't imagine what the ending is going to be. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you going to see it? A great awakening is definitely happening. Not everybody is asleep. People in America are slowly waking up. And I have proof. They were talking about civil war in the movie a few months ago when the other one that the Obamas did came out. And they just released the trailer to TikTok last night in the middle of the night, I guess. The comment section gave me hope. Now let's watch that trailer. The so-called Western forces have suffered a very great loss. The Western forces are stopped 120 miles from the sea. The WF won't stop. They stalled and lost their supply lines. DC's only protection now. A few do it. Our soldiers can full secret service. WF's gonna roll right in. What they put in the public view is always suggestive programming. They trying to tell us something. They give us clues in the movies before it starts happening. MK conditioning. Hollywood is designed to distract us from what's going on in the government and make it seem like it's red versus blue, not poor versus rich. Predictive programming. Western forces could take over the whole country in real life. California and Texas, come on. I do admit, I think it's very far-fetched that California and Texas would somehow come together to fight against the rest of the United States. I will most likely watch it just so that I can talk about it for content purposes, but understanding that I understand what it is. I think that so many people are not privy to the fact that Hollywood is a bought and paid for industry and it is basically a weaponized arm of the government at this point. Like literally there is funding in the Pentagon for Hollywood. And I think that people are starting to wake up to this. I truly am. The Great Awakening is happening. People slowly but surely are coming out of their slumber. So this gives me hope, y'all. Gives me hope. So, and we need some of that.
every now and then. Shout out to Eleven, Stacy's mom. I agree. A great awakening is happening. You know? On all kinds of levels. So I agree. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Civil War movie Obama Gematria Breakdown. Civil War comes out April 12th. That's going to be four months and four days after Obama's movie Leave the World Behind was released on Netflix. And that movie came out four months and four days after Obama's birthday. And of course, Obama was number 44. And in that movie, they mentioned Civil War. The movie's coming out 163 years after the Civil War began. Barack Hussein Obama equals 163. The movie comes out on the 103rd day of the year. Obama equals 103. Dragon equals 103. The movie is 1 hour 49 minutes. Antichrist, Beast System, Revelation, they all equal 149. Obama's birthday, the day leaving 149 days left in the year. Guys, please share this video with everyone you can. And keep looking up. Jesus is coming very soon. I can't wait. And I'll see you on the next video. Shout outs to Joseph Aquavia 2222 with the Gematria. Putting numbers together. Interesting stuff. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Seven signs a new civil war is about to happen. Don't forget to share. No, I don't have a date. Let's talk about what I came up with. Increasing partisanship. Over 30 states are trying to remove Trump from the 2024 ballot. I'm pretty sure partisanship has left the building. Dysfunctional governance, like the blatant disregard for our citizens to send money abroad. Impeachment and coup rhetoric. I mean, we've been living in impeachment culture since November of 2016. Widening of the wealth gap. We all know the wealth gap has been spiraling out of control for most of our history, but extremely so since 2020. The further entrenching of oligarchy. Do we the people even have a say as to what happens in this country anymore? Rise of extremist ideologies. The fact that some far left and far right organizations are deemed as terrorists, I'm pretty sure we checked that box. Rise of artificial intelligence. There has been many employees fired from multiple tech companies for speaking out about the programming that they created. Seven out of seven boxes checked. I could also go into political, racial, religious, and social division, but I think we all know how deep that's getting in this country. Shout out to Appalachian Prepper. You know, with the movie coming out, him expressing his thoughts and ideas on the parallels to our society. Interesting. So as we all know, there is an eclipse in the movie Leave the World Behind. But as I was going to take the pictures that I wanted for this video, and I was holding my phone pretty far away as the video was playing, I noticed it looks like there is a picture on that flag. Look closely at where the red arrow was pointing. Does anybody else see what I see in that flag? I th think I see Obama in the flag holding something in his hand maybe i'm not sure what that is guys let me know if you think if you see what i see <laughs> or if i'm crazy that is obama and the flag i have other videos about on obama and being in the movie leave the world behind and about the antichrist being in the movie leave the world behind please go watch that video but this one is about the eclipse this person i watched their video about the eclipse and they called out how the eclipse from 2017 ends in Charleston, South Carolina, the path of the eclipse over the U.S., which really blew me away because, and they also called out how that was the beginning of the Civil War, Charleston, South Carolina, but that is also the beach in the movie, Leave the World Behind, is Charleston, Harbor, South Carolina, which is very strange because they, they are actually in New York, but when they walk onto the beach, there's a sign here that is saying they're in Charleston Harbor. And as most people know that have been following this movie, at the end of it, they allude to that we won't know who the enemies actually are, and here it says that the country will turn on it we will turn on each other and that civil war will happen. The movie seems to be alluding toward civil war. So alluding toward civil war and 
and they start out on the beach where the Civil War actually began in the U.S. And there are some other clues. There was this picture that's in the basement of their house that has the map of the U.S. upside down. They also have the upside down flags in the intro song called Revenge. And there's another interesting thing. There's these three clocks that that are in the house and then this fourth large clock, which I believe is pointing to the, the beasts. So the fourth beast is a large beast, but notice the time on it. It's 1117. So that clock is displayed on the wall right before G.H. and his daughter show up or right before the Antichrist shows up. And the time on it is 1117. So Luke 1117, but he knows their thoughts, s s said to them, every kingdom divided against itself shall be brought to desolation and a house divided against itself against a house falls. And after they've been there talking for a little while, the alert starts showing up on the TV here and that Jenga tower that they built falls, which I have another video about that representing Babylon falling, but, but a house divided against itself falls as we are currently seeing in this country and probably around the world. Strange that Obama would be producing a movie that points to such things. Okay, so back to this video. So here's the flag coming up. Right there is the face. And then it looks like a hand, and then the hand is holding something, I think. And that's what I see. And then notice how the, the I believe the flag obviously represents the U.S., but then there's darkness covering the U.S., that is what I think the message is here. And then at the end of the video, in the movie, right after this happens, right after the eclipse, the next morning is when Archie wakes up and his teeth fall out, which um, I've already explained in another video what I think that actually means. Please go. So this is the video about the Antichrist. This one has... What I believe the teeth falling out is the weapon, the thing that has been mandated for the last three years. And then this one is where Jesus, this mountain represents Jesus, shows up on that same beach that that is Charleston Harbor that they show them walking to. So that video is about that. As I've said previously, I believe the Lord Jesus is revealing a ton in this movie that I, that also Satan, the Antichrist, was using to also send a message, but the Lord has dominion over all things. So the Lord can come right over the top of what the message that Satan is doing, sending, and reveal truth. And that's what I think is happening here. So what do I think it all means? I don't even want to say for sure, but I'm definitely going to be interested in April 8th and what happens after that? If you don't know Jesus, this should be your come to Jesus moment. Shout out to I Am His 77, pointing out the eclipse in the movie. They didn't even realize it. So it's people showing videos of a dragon flying by the solar eclipse. Do dragons really exist? These are the pictures in the videos people are showing. They are saying that this is really a dragon. Do we live in some kind of fairy tale? These videos and images people are showing of this dragon, I believe it 100%. The reason I believe it is because I learned how to connect the dots and follow the breadcrumbs. 2024 is the year of the dragon for China. This is the year of smoke and fire. So you might start seeing gins because gins are made out of smokeless fire and you might start seeing dragons because dragons are the fire element. They try to warn people in these TV shows. Remember Game of Thrones? You think they just made this TV show up out of nowhere? No, they have to tell you the truth. The Game of Thrones is a real thing that's happened in the universe. People are really going to war, planet to planet, star system to star system, trying to conquer everything. There's a real life galactic federation. There are certain humans that sit at these tables in different universes and make up different laws. You hear about the Greys, 
Didracolians, the Pleiadians, the Artorians. This stuff is really happening. There are people really making choices for our life in the universe. And the dragons are the oldest species in this universe. They actually come from a different universe. And once they came here, they took it over. Alpha Dracolian is the star constellation that most of these dragons come from. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. But this is going to be the year where everything changes. This is the year of smoke and fire. So these old systems are going to be burnt down to the ground and the new system is going to be built. Everyone who's seen these dragons during a solar eclipse, don't panic. Anytime you see a dragon, it lets you know that good fortune is about to take place in this world. I know what they told us, the dragon is bad, the dragon is the devil. That's not true. The dragon represents new growth and new fortune. We are about to be spiritually rich once again. Dragons do exist. And yes, we do live in a fairy tale. The universe is a mystery. It's all about stories. Everything you can think of really do exist in the universe. The universe gave us all the secrets, all the knowledge, all the mysteries. But we don't use our imagination. If you don't use your imagination, you are going to get a hex or a spell put on you by a dark magician. Yes, magic is real also. You are really living in the Game of Thrones. There are certain people that's fighting over different kingdoms in this universe. And we are too busy fighting ourselves, so we don't understand what's really taking place. The more we fight and argue with each other, we will never understand what's really happening in the universe. We keep looking at each other like it's a competition, or I'm better than you, or I'm smarter than you, not realizing we are all supposed to work together, because this is the Game of Thrones. This is really our kingdom right now, but we don't want it, so therefore other life forms is going to always take it. Look at the world right now. Do you think this shit is just normal? Just remember, I'm a conspiracy. This is just my words, my facts. You don't gotta believe nothing I say. Shout out to organic like us. Like he said, you don't gotta believe a word he said. But that entity did look like a dragon. You know, formless, like smoke. It kinda did. I think dragons are cool. Shout out to all my Game of Thrones fans. Let me know how you feel about dragons in the comments down below. The entire country was just gaslit. Let me explain. Let me start by saying the ones on here that are attacking the people who had predictions for the 8th, I would say y'all are way, way worse than they are. At least they use logic, rationality, and their brain. We're gonna go through a lot of stuff. Notice his eclipse thing though, 33.3 million at 33,000 reshares. Like I said in my videos, it was a time to repent and y'all failed. But what bothers me the most is the massive gaslighting done by the people who run America. The news literally said that there's going to be an earthquake on the 8th. And not just this, but Saturday Night Live ran a skit about an earthquake being on the 8th. And it's not over yet because we've got the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. As Deborah Ross was telling us, it's going to be a transformative experience. The news was the one telling you to get food, gas, National Guard was going to be there, and all this other stuff. Bring us for an earthquake. Check out SNL last night. remember this okay so we've all been talking about the eclipse happening on april 8th right but does anybody remember in 2017 when they said that an eclipse like this would not happen again in our lifetime like i can't remember what the the years were but tell me i'm not the only one that remembers this and on top of all of this we had nasa warning people not to take videos on their phone camera I wonder why wait i've seen a lot of things on here <laughs> That's not the devil's comment. It was rain. And there are people who recorded multiple portals in the sky. 
And of course, we had these black blurs flying through the screens, and people said, oh no, there are airplanes. Here's the problem, that there's an airplane, you would only see it in your direct area. People all across the world, or all across the United States, would not see a plane in front of the sun by your area. Yes, you would. Here's a different one in a completely different state. And I saw a video that had two of them going by. They were everywhere. Then Research the Earth put this out a day or two or a day before the eclipse. Huh. I said in every single one of my videos and lives that nothing would happen on the 8th. Because historically, we see from the evidence that nothing ever happens right when it happens. 1811 is three months later. The earthquakes are four months. But since y'all are grouping everybody together, especially the ones that just gave you real factual historical evidence, I'm gonna stand up for them and say, y'all are doomed. You will follow the masses wherever they go, even when it's off a cliff. Taiwan, China, a different place in China, Indonesia, in another six in Indonesia. There's been big earthquakes all day, and guess what? It's not slowing down. And for the people poking the Christians or even poking at God for saying it's the end times, just know it's God himself that draws in the sky, puts the sun, the moon, the stars, and the wandering stars in the sky, and that's exactly who you're poking at. Y'all better repent. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repent. This is so cool. All the disbelievers and scoffers thought they got away and thought nothing was going to happen. And y'all not even looking up. You the main ones watching the eclipse and y'all not even looking up and paying attention. My second question is, when did CERN cut the machine on? The people who really do research, they know that CERN is going to cut the machine on. But as the looks of this video, look like something already came up out of there. If you haven't watched this movie yet, go and watch this movie while you got a chance. It's called Day of Reckoning, and it's about the eclipse. And this one looks like flew by the moon just a while ago. Tick-tock centers, the day of accountability is here. Shout out to the counselor, Yatora. i never seen that movie, the Day of Reckoning. Definitely got to see it now. Let me know if you've seen it down in the comments down below. As we come out of the great solar eclipse of April the 8th, 2024, the Most High Yah has now completed the Hebrew tithe across America. From this point onward, there will be nothing but plagues, which is the judgment being poured out. You see, the scoffers had to come, for this was prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. In the last days will come scoffers, and they will speak according to their own evil desires, and they're going to say, where was this promised presence of his? Is things not continuing as they been since our ancestors and our forefathers fell asleep until now? So they was always destined to make light of the situation that happened because they can't see the kingdom of the Most High because the kingdom is within and the kingdom cannot be observed with physical signs. And you can't say, look here, look there, for the kingdom is within you. It is inside of you. It is a 5D shift. And many of you have felt that burst of energy when that blacked out and that portal opened up. You also seen the celestial sign that was situated right beneath the sun if you was looking at it, right? Mm-hmm. And you notice that they were spraying the skies like crazy because there was a lot of things that was happening and they didn't want you to see it, nor did they want you to feel it. And yet it still happened anyway. So while they trying to make light of the situation and lie and say that we gave a date and said the world's going to completely burn down and the churches was talking about some rapture, they failed to realize that something did happen. And while they are laughing at the calm before the storm, soon you shall see in the days that shall occur. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed tonight's wrap though. Before we go, just want to give a huge shout out to Sherry, Top Rope Takeover, Tarika Smith, Brandon, ER, Forever Faded, Nola, Marie Flavelle, Harry240, Dukester, Tawana Simpson, Bunny, April Clark, Lorraine Sanchez, and Jen A. Thank you guys so much for your support. I appreciate you. Peace and blessings. If you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, just to make sure the algorithm knows what's up. So what we're gonna do, y'all? That's right. Run these numbers up. Thanks again. Until next time.